Um, thank you all for coming. Um, I very much appreciate it. I'm David Stevens, Manager of Web Services at Neiman College, and you introduced the rest of the panel, so I won't, I won't go into that. But um, what, this rep what this presentation represents is um, a pretty ambitious project that's been underway at Neiman College over the past, really, five years. It's been evolving. Um, under the direction of our CIO and VP, we've been building up quite a bit internally, as well as using uh, best of breed tools, s numerous technology innovations and deploying them for our college. Uh, but what soon sort of emerged as the need to really integrate these systems into a unified enterprise solution. And that includes not just within our own IT division, but really cross-institutional. So we have enrollment management managing our CRM tool, Hobson's. We have an example of our campus life group using an external application to manage their internal events and their groups and clubs. So these are just two examples. Of course, we have CUNY first. So we have these shadow systems and silos really sprawling all over. And what we find is that from a student point of view, or really any stakeholder we have at the college, it becomes a very difficult sort of unruly and somewhat unmanageable process. So we have tried as best as possible, and, and, and slowly but surely is starting to take shape, of bringing these shadow systems, silos, uh, mobile cloud, web, our website, our mobile app, which we'll talk about, and our data um, as a major part of instructing these efforts into a really a strategic, unified, federated technology architecture. So, and so let's get uh, into this ecosystem defined. What we're really talking about, as I mentioned, is really grab is is taking applications sprawled all over our institution, web, cloud services, web services, mobile solutions, and data and internal applications, CUNY first, all this. And I'll tell you, do I, do I have my phone? No, my phone's there. <laughs> so my prop is gone. But where we're finding is all these roads are really lean, leading towards uh, mobile devices. So we've sort of embarked on this effort of doing a federated approach that's as much as possible um, authenticating with one username and password, bringing these data sources through various means, XML feeds or RSS feeds or web services or what have you. Um, into our mobile app, which we'll show at the very end. Why are we doing this? Is really aligning the college's messaging, brand, and uh, providing personalized notifications to students in support of fundraising, uh, recruitment, uh, retention, and graduation efforts, right? And the key operative word, I think, is data-driven. So we, um, you guys mentioned some of that with the Google Docs, and we need that too. And we're really, we're really data-driven on quite, quite a, a mature level, thanks to our application database group. So we have business intelligence tools and predictive analytics that are also instructing intervention strategies with students who may be in jeopardy of having courses drop financially or academically. Um, some of these predictive models can, can literally predict which students are susceptible to this. And the intervention happens with traditional email through our CRM tool, but now more recently through push notifications on a cell phone. So we have a mobile device where we can grab uh, alerts from CUNY first, and um, the federation happens that where each department could be registrar, or it could be financial aid, or whoever it is, can actually get the ample IDs and push these notifications out on the device. It's very powerful because you get badges which actually have the colored numbers on the app that shows something important is here, right? So it's a really an exciting innovation. And as I mentioned, really, it's um, about integrating these silos and shadow systems into a unified enterprise. So um, this is a, I'm not going to go through this, but this is really designed as an hour presentation. So we're crunching this. Um, and I'm probably close to being over already. So, but this gives you kind of a bird's eye view of the systems, right? And I think we all have similar systems. You know, we have um, our social media certainly system, our website, our Hobsons and CUNY for CRM, email marketing, we have a portal, we have a mobile app, our signage system, you know, IQ Smart Catalog, we have a media asset repository where we're managing videos, although they're housed on YouTube or Vimeo or wherever, we bring them into an, a, a unified environment. Um, and the key characteristic, characteristic of all of these tools is that the content is generated 
once, and it li lives in one of these environments, but it propagates out contextually to the mobile app or to websites or to social media. So we have a piece of content maximizing exposure and actionability of that content because by developing at one time and then pushing it out to all these locations. And the other really key thing is that does us no good if there's no call to action. So the other thing we're leading toward is saying we got to have a call to action in those pieces of content so that we can lead the user to the next step. And we, I would get into specific use cases if this was an hour, but I'm not going to because, so um, I'll just, we got to uh, move this thing forward. So one example, I don't know, do, do people know that President Obama was at Neiman College? Yeah. Yeah, I know, right, of course, right? Yeah, that was very exciting. So I thought, wow, it, it's oppor being opportunistic. Now I'm going to bake that into this presentation now. It's going to be there forever. So that's, yeah, that was our homepage um, uh, screenshot of his visit, uh, which was very exciting. So this is an, um, just a quick example of, um, from just using Google Analytics data, we're going to get into deeper use of BI and predictive analytics uh, later, but I'll just give an example of how we're using Google Analytics to drive website redesigns. So the, that really what we're talking about with um, mobile-first design is the idea that ultimately, right, we have a lot of content on our website, but really there's probably 20% of it that people need. Mm -hmm. And how we, how we actually extrapolate what that 20% is will largely come from Google Analytics data, right? The data doesn't lie. Where are people going? And what are they interested in, right? But it's also, of course, the college's goals and initiatives because there's, there certainly could be websites built that are in line with the college's goals that haven't gotten the traction yet from analytics. So we also have to be cognizant of that. So it's, but ultimately this analytics data can really help us drive the redesign and make the website much more usable and useful for people. Um, so that's, you know, that's a quick um, example. And then I mentioned this content syndication, and that's very important too when we talk about the ecosystem because it's the idea that we want to generate content once. And it's hard to generate good content, right? It's not easy. So when we get a good piece of content like Obama's visit, we have to really exploit that. That's such a fantastic gift, really, for us. And so, so I'll give just an example. So how could we do it? We can have the simple, cer certainly we use Facebook, of course. Um, and we got 1,000 um, uh, uh, engagements on our Facebook, which was unbelievable. It just spiked all over likes and comments and shares going crazy. So the idea is that, and we didn't really do this for the, for the president's visit, because I think that the president's visit spoke for itself. But we could have said, you know, come to our beautiful campus today, or something, as a call to action with that post. Because that post, if there's 1,000 engagements, you're talking about 100,000 views at least, you know, so maybe probably more, really. Um, so you're talking about this, this piece of content getting maximum exposure, and then the key is you need a call to action in that content to really drive users to the goal. In this case, we could say, well, we want to use this for recruitment, right? So it's just being about, it's all about content strategy and being strategic and using the technology to achieve the goal. So that's what this sort of enterprise. So we're going to get to the mobile app and how, and how the data piece uh, comes into play. So I'll come back at the end and talk a little bit about our mobile app initiative. So, but I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Medved <coughs> to talk about more about the uh, data piece. Business intelligence and predictive. Well, David mentioned a lot. He gave you a general picture of what we are doing or what we're planning to do in the nearest future, what we're currently doing. And as he said, by the end, he'll get to the mobile computing and mobile analytics, which is very handy currently for our student population and very important. But before we get to this point, we, we had to uh, do something with the data we currently have available to us. You know, we have to organize it, we have to analyze it, and as David mentioned, we have to, as much as possible, predict what happened to, in the future. So those three main bullets shows you, first, you define the data, okay? And you, know, you all know so the, matter, uh, the modern terminology, it's all big data now. Whatever amount you have, it cannot be small anymore. We <coughs> compiling data from very well known to you, CUNY first, from all the other sources, and we're putting it in our data warehouse, and that's the beginning of the processing. Then we use two major tools, 
which is business intelligence based on Oracle OBI EE version 10 and 11. And we analyzed data, we create report and we create dashboards based on the data we accumulated. And the last one is the predictive analytics shows you pattern of predictive scenarios, what's gonna happen if certain amount of uh, of components will be satisfied, parameters, I should say. And you'll see the examples a little later. Okay, uh, continue with the first slide. That's what we came to. Um, those bullets shows you, first of all, what if you analyze your data, what happened in the past? Descriptive, and what happened? You see, you have the data accumulated in your data warehouse, you run reports, you show your data in dashboards, and you see the status of data currently, what it is. Then you diagnose why it happened the way you got it in your reports. What was the driven power and uh, uh, the uh, this accumulated and correlated data you got in your reports and dashboards. And the future, again, how can we predict what happens, what will happen, and you'll see that the prediction is actually so close to reality that uh, sometimes we think we have the crystal ball. It's uh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, and prescriptive, how can we improve what's happening in the reality and what we can see in our analytics, in our business intelligence tools. What do we do it for? You all know very well, we're all in the same college. Um, improve re uh, recruitment and retention. Revenue growth, of course, you know that almost every college is left alone now. Whatever you can collect, whatever you can accumulate, that's your money, nobody's gonna give you anything. And, <laughs> yeah. and cost avoidance, that's very important. As the previous, presenter said, uh, you have to use as much as possible, which is free, you know, you don't have to pay for it. Our tools is not completely free, but it's not really that costly <coughs> compared to the goals and compared to the results we're achieving. It's, I think the return on the investment is really great. And the last one I'll show you <coughs> what will, uh, we have two presenters here. Lee for business intelligence and Arty for predictive modeling. And two of them will show you our dashboards and reports uh, geared toward, towards an enrollment and retention. And what is likely to happen, you'll see with predictive analytics. And we're using Rapid Insight. It's a tool we're using to predict what's going to happen with our enrollment, admission, retention, attrition. Yeah, everything else which is extremely valuable and important in our day-to-day -day life. So here is the next presenter, Lee Millman. We'll tell you about business intelligence. <laughs> Hello. Um, so this is the uh, Lehman College dashboard. It's a reporting and um, um, dashboard system that we have developed for Lehman that has been going live for the past couple of years since our uh, CIO and VP Ron Bergman came on board. Uh, what, is you, what you are looking at is, um, is a dashboard <coughs> we, see, we show for the level of VP um, level provost and um, the hiring manager from the present office to show the current enrollment data along with retention data along with the student, uh, the faculty teaching workload. So the BI data including all the enrollment data from CUNY First, from SIMS, also including the college budgeting expenditure data, the admissions data, the student got accepted, student um, get admitted, the student got accepted, student enrolled. Um, also the other small data point, for example, the, the um, public safety data, et cetera. So, Every day, the user can log into the system and can see the current uh, college um, enrollment data plus the other data points involved. They also can see the historical data that involved in the in the campus. So, 
probably not very clear to you, so I'm just going to explain it briefly in here. So this is the college enrollment data very clearly. So comparisons between the current semester and previous semesters to give the user a very clear view where we are now if the enrollment start opening compared to where we were before when the semester ends on previous semesters. And this part is the retention data, which I have another slide in here. Um, to tell them on the particular cohort, the student, how they were doing along the way um, in the um, campus. And this is the faculty teaching workload data on full-time and part-time. I know for many campuses, this has been always been a challenge to show the, the faculty teaching workload because you can never merge the data. It will take time to merge data between the enrollment and also the expenditure, right? The expenditure telling you the full-time, part-time um, was the pay rate, uh, was the hours they work in, in the campus. Now, the enrollment data is how many courses they're teaching, how many students are involved in the course. In BI, the two data that <coughs> merge together tell you the, the faculty teaching workload can be by faculty, by term, and by the department, or even by the school. So this is the retention data on that. You can basically grab any type of cohort of students. The one we grabbed is uh, the freshman students for fall 2011. We followed them throughout the following semesters from the 12, um, 2012, 2013, 2014, et cetera. And we can see how many students dropped between the semesters, how many down the road can graduate, and how many did not graduate from, um, from the particular cohort. Um, before this kind of report can be done, yeah, in a couple of weeks, right, even months, by the time you receive the report, the data is already old. Now this data is um, merged together in the back end in the BI on the OBIE and allow user to pick up any type of um, selections on the cohort and do the data analysis and to see why the students drop out on it. That's the thing on BI data. At the very beginning, when people look at this this giant application is, okay, we can create reports. We can create dashboard. to should have need to see what's the number. Later on, when they see all the reports and dashboard on their mind, they're thinking, what can we use this data for? Can we use this, this data predicting what's the next uh, semester we can have on certain group of students? What's the retention rate? What's the attrition rate on that? Okay, so, um, so after the dashboard had been going on for two, three years, we presented this to the users. Um, um, studying a particular cohort. We did this recently, we also did um, the six student cohort. Um, we want to analyze the six student, which is pretty big percentage population in Lehman, to see how many students come in as a freshman, how many come in uh, as a transfer, and between the freshman transfer, how many stayed in the campus until the graduation, um, how many did not stay, and SEEK also have a rule that they can only stay in the campus with 10 semesters with the financial aid, after that they either don't get financial aid, they have to get student, um, special permission to get that. So during the semesters, you can an actually analyze and we can actually create a long report for them, how many semesters per student stayed in the campus throughout um, Lehman College. Okay. Um, before the data, before the data can bring to, to the dashboard, um, it's very difficult to get the reports like that. Now all these reports are in user's fingertip and user be able to get the access on it. And this is just a daily report we show to the enrollment office, also the admissions office and the other campuses, the other offices in campus to show them the enrollment data on, on database. So they can log in on any time during the day. The 805 data will be loaded to the system. They have a clear picture of uh, where our enrollment are or were um, throughout the terms. Uh, Lehman is the first campus in CUNY has implemented the full load of uh, OBIE application that allow user to see the dashboard and reports. And before it probably takes hour, takes weeks of days to create a report. Now certain report can be done uh, in within minutes. User can do ad hoc queries very quickly within minutes, uh, or the queries, uh, the reports done by the IT group and show to the user on that. So um, has become a very um, challenging road for us down when we start first implement this, but has been getting pretty good feedbacks within U Lehman, even within the CUNY campus. <coughs> okay. So next one is our predictive.
talk after, you know, it'll be lunchtime after this, and so you can continue talking. Um, thank you, Lee. Um, so going forward from dashboards and current data, um, our VP also wanted to uh, wanted us to push towards what's going to happen uh, into predictive analytics. Um, so uh, we uh, we got a simple tool, a uh, simple regression analytical tool, and um, that's how we got started. So we collect our data. We started with uh, attrition, started building attrition models or retention models for students. Um, we are in process of building graduation models. Um, so there, there are possibilities are limitless. Uh, but we started with attrition models. So simple uh, for attrition, what are the variables that, um, that are related to attrition? Uh, we started with a freshman, first time, full time freshman cohort. Um, so the variables that we thought um, were important were where did the students come from, um, how far do they live from the campus, uh, their SAT scores, um, and we followed these students, um, as we said, we followed them from fall 11 to fall 14, spring 15. So we have been recording their um, credits taken per semester, credits earned per se semester, so all those parameters we use uh, for regression analysis tool. So at the end of this uh, um, regression, um, the, the tool creates a predictive model. And that model, uh, we can, same model can be imposed on upcoming semesters. So you can use the same model and impose, um, and get the data for uh, future semesters and impose the same model to get your predictive uh, results. That's the idea behind predictive tools. So um, the way we built this model was uh, our simple cohort of 450 or 54 first-time, full-time freshmen uh, students, um, beginning from fall 11. As I said, we uh, gathered various parameters of these students. Uh, the model clearly showed us the 32% attrition rate at the end of fall 2014. Um, uh, the best part of this was the model predicted that the end of uh, whichever semester that we are predicting for, it predicted that 154 students would attrit, and the actual data showed 146 students. Um, and and my VP always mentions that that the students who were predicted they act they were the ones who um, attrit. So 100%. 100%. 100%. Wow. wow. That, that's why I go this theory. So I mean, the, if the data is so clear, um, the, we can certainly take steps towards um, early intervention, and that's what we are working on on our campus right now with uh, um, early intervention tools like Steer. Uh, I don't know what other campuses are using Glassfish, or I think, yeah, because that's a different side of the house with faculty. Yeah. We have faculty yeah. and and. All of this I know that our SDM people are talking about. Sure. Um, so this is the model. Um, <coughs> it shows uh, the red bars are actual data, uh, blue bars are predicted. So the, so the data, whatever data you uh, gather, um, it gets divided into 10 deciles. The, the first two are the most likely deciles. Um, it's a step down, uh, step down model. And this tool is great because it gives you insights into some kind of um, some um, some parameters that you never thought would come into picture of the of prediction model. Um, for example, it gives you relationships between uh, student earned credits or student attempted credits and attrition. So when we are building the model and when we were, we were flipping through the screens, it, it clearly showed us that our part time students students who are um, earning less than um, 10, 12 credits, um, or who are attempting less than 12 credits, are at higher risk for attrition versus the full-timers. Um, other other uh, interesting things that come into picture are like, students who were put on probation, uh, the first year they arrived, the first semester they arrived, they were, they are treated at higher rate than the students who were put on probation in the previous in, uh, in the subsequent semesters. So can I ask a question about what sure. you're doing? So from this, I think it was two slides ago, you just showed the red and the blue. Yes. 
then with all the different variables that you've put in, can you actually kind of slice and dice it and just look at it for this group or that group? Absolutely, you absolutely. Yeah. So you would build, the idea is that you would build model for your different cohorts. Mm -hmm. So you would build it for first time, full time cohort, you would right. build it for your transfer cohort, and then you can compare the results uh, between. But then you could look at just students who live uh, five miles away versus students yeah. who live. Oh, absolutely, somewhere. absolutely. You can, you can, the data mining that this tool gives, it's, it's amazing. May I ask a question? Sure. Um, did you use a particular framework? Yeah. You could look at, or could narrow in on to develop your models. Uh, or did you develop your, did you develop your models in-house? Are you in -house. using like something like the power framework? No, it's an in-house, in-house development. I mean, we grabbed, we acquired this tool. This is, this is a desktop tool. Um, but, but we built it. Um, so the model is really, an, uh, it, it's a mathematical equation. I'm sorry, this screen is too tiny. Um, but it's, the model eventually comes down as a mathematical equation, which gives you, this is my sample data, and th these are the probabilities that model, model gives at the end of, the, uh, end of my equation. Um, so, and this is a valuable data. You can uh, export this data and figure out you know, you can do various analysis on this based on the probability. So higher the probability, those are your likely you know, students to attrit. Your Y parameter for this uh, model is attrition. So, um, and, and this data, you can figure out you know, ethnicity, uh, whichever parameters you use, but this is a valuable data. You can use it in um, Tableau or whatever other tools that you want and have more visual um, analysis. I think after this, I'm going to get back to David, who's giving giving you the mobile version of this. Thank you, Marty. All right. Yeah, this part of the presentation that RT did is always the kind of big enchilada, you know. <laughs> it's, people, it's just so much, and it's so amazing. So the question then is, what do we do with it? In the end, right? Um, and we're, what we've been building out is a mobile app, as I mentioned earlier. And um, I think the key things to look at with this is, that, is think about this the personalization aspect. Mm -hmm. So there is an authentication that happens with the app. And then this notification, this number and this number, this is the pers these are basically the personalized areas. And this notification component becomes I mean, really powerful because if you think about the intervention strategies that can be gleaned, or the, the data that's basically indicating students that are at risk, you can intervene much sooner than you could otherwise, right? So there's a greater chance to, to do something about the problem, and, and that's of course great for revenue, of course great for students, and, and it helps our graduation rate. And everything else. So it's clear, um, and, and this is so important because I, I, the email is controversial because I mean, in our campus, I don't know if it's true for you all, but we, put everything but the kitchen sink in email. And the students are really getting, you know, inundated with these emails. They're also having some issues with passwords and all these kind of things. So email becomes, it, 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 you know, it's not, I, I think we actually have data on email, and I don't think it's from our Hobson CRM, and it's not not impressive. The, and, and, and we're losing, um, and students are frankly not being, there's there's not a communicate, an effective communication channel to, to let the students know something critical is going on. So we have some decisions to make about what notifications go out. We're not going to be sending the menu, the cafeteria menu, uh, <laughs> right? oh, or things like that. That's not going to go out. If you see a number in the notification, it means something, right? And it means it needs to take action. Again, I was talking about the calls to action. Part of the, so the, the data sort of uh, tables that we're going to build out with the database, which is actually what drives these, not these push notifications, will include a call to action. So students have an actionable step immediately to take. You must still, you must like get a bit political with some people being like, oh no, this is important. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Very much. Well, we haven't quite gotten over that bridge yet. Uh, so we, but you're, I, we're anticipating that. And I think we, but we just need, you know, we need to really, I think, yeah, I, it, it, it is good work, no doubt. But we got to make those decisions. And we have to know, we, students cannot once think that they're going to be spammed. 
That's yeah. it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's true. And that's, that's the deal. Yeah. How do you get students to download the app? And we're going to we're going to do a, a a very extensive marketing mm -hmm. campaign and i think at orientation we're going to notify yeah. students we think we, we it'll be interesting to see the adoption rate we suspect it'll be um pretty good i think that this the way we're envisioning this is really as a personal assistant as much mm -hmm. as anything else yeah, yeah. the um yeah. and this is your courses um yeah. you know your financial or, or uh, sorry your uh your schedule your grades your academic standing um that kind of data would be in the my, my Lehman section, the notifications here, and a whole slew of other things in between. Blackboard Learn, um, kind of, we'll just go right out to the app. There is some integration you can do with Blackboard Learn. Um, mm -hmm. So once the students download this app and they authenticate on their smartphone or whatever, mm -hmm. do they have to log into these individual systems? Because I know that the process for logging into Blackboard and Gene first are completely different. So. That, is, that, is a, that is really a uh, Key question, and what we um, uh, one of the tools we didn't get a chance to really talk too much about in our ecosystem is what we call Lean One Connect, and it's uh, our first stab at at single sign-on, and there is a way within that to authenticate once, and you have all of your apps. You actually have to authenticate in them all, but they're in that one environment. That's part of the integration in the mobile app we're working on, is is to see if we can leverage an even one access figure because absolutely agree with that. I mean that's very important. So the ideal scenario is all this is really going to be linking out to the responsive website. This goes to Blackboard Learn, the course schedule. We have feeds coming in. We didn't talk much about all the other things, the exciting things, because we have this ecosystem that this app is getting feeds, RSS, XML, all these feeds coming in. Uh, right. Yeah, go ahead. No, we're getting to yeah, yeah, I have yeah. one burning question sure. that I have to know. I, it, I can't understand. Is this all one big, wonderful thing that's doing all of this, or is it different? <laughs> System. It's ma so. magical. <laughs> um, it's, you know, you know what it is. This, what is this? Yeah, no. Okay, so you know, this is a great question, and this is this thing that that was sort of suggesting is this this idea of we've got these shadow systems and silos all over the place. CUNY first is a silo, and it's maybe right as a shadow system. So, so this is what we're trying to do is aggregate all, right. all of these data sources. So you do build. Well, the the key is a lot of these systems need to ex export data. Mm -hmm. That's the big, that's the deal, right? They need to be able to push RSS or XML, and we need to we get data extracts from CUNY mm -hmm. first. We get a CSV file. This application basically interfaces with that CSV file. It can also interface with other data sources, a database mm -hmm. or other things. When there's new something new in one of the tables, the push notification goes out, or the data gets updated. The RSS feeds come from, you know, like the academic calendar. We have a calendar section of our event management, and it generates an RSS feed. So the big, the big things coming up, last day to drop ad, you know, last day to register, all that is coming, oh, up, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's the other, that's the interesting thing too, is this push notification. You know, we have different roles. This is a, an existing student role. We also have a future student and a visitor and alumni role. So we can actually push notifications out to them contextually. So a visitor might be interested in um, alumni events or arts events, you know, or what, we'll figure out what that is. But those RSS feeds of those of those calendar events, will go, we could theoretically push. The open houses and information session would go would push to this or to a prospective student, future student. So um, yeah, it's interesting because I think to an to try to, to to answer your question, this ends up being, a mobile app ends up being, in a lot of ways, the, the, the best method for pulling all these, all this data and content and feeds together in a, in a, in a, in a frankly, in a device that everybody, everybody's using and everybody's working on. The website works, all these different pieces work, but this is a way to really bring it all together in a beautiful manner. So, um, that's it. Thank you guys very, very much. Thank you very much.